On Monday 15th of May 2023, professional boxer and ex-Mongols Baiki Suleiman Sam Abdul Rahim aka The Punisher, appeared at the Supreme Court in Victoria where he was suing the state government over 73 days spent unlawfully behind bars, when his parole was revoked in 2019. The story goes back to 2015 when Sam at the age of 26, was driving his high-performance Ferrari 360 Spider at almost 50 km above the speed limit and on the wrong side of the road. He then clipped two vehicles and plowed into a Mazda sedan near the intersection of High Street and Broadhurst Avenue and Reservoir. Lynette Vernal was driving her 88-year-old mother, Muriel Hullett, back to a retirement home after a family lunch when Abdul Rahim lost control of the Ferrari and hit their car. Vernal survived horrific injuries, but her mum died after eight days in a coma, suffering from extensive neck and chest injuries. Sam was sentenced to a maximum of three years and three months, with a two-year minimum. He was released on parole in March 2019 after serving 519 days pre-sentence detention, with conditions that he not associate with members of outlaw motorcycle gangs or Middle Eastern organized crime. While on bail Sam was shopping at Woolworths with his ex-partner when plainclothed police arrested him. The parole board had backflipped on its decision to grant the release, because of a perceived risk to the community after a series of shootings that police believed he was the intended victim of. The parole board revoked his parole, claiming that Sam was a risk to the public. He was put back into custody in June 2019 until Justice Paul Coughlin found the board acted beyond its powers, and freed him, on August 23rd. Spending an extra 72 days in prison, unlawfully behind bars and in solitary confinement. Sam told the court that he felt trapped like a dog in jail, and was handcuffed and shackled like an animal to walk to family visits. He claimed that the move actually put him in danger after he was assaulted in jail in July 2019. In his claim, Sam sought compensation in the amount of $187,883, outlining several grounds for his request. He emphasized the impact of his deprivation of liberty, highlighting the psychological and emotional toll it took on him during his time behind bars. Additionally, he cited the occurrence of a psychiatric injury, which he claimed resulted directly from the traumatic events surrounding his arrest and subsequent imprisonment. Furthermore, he pointed out the shock and humiliation he experienced due to the public nature of his arrest. He contended that the negative publicity and social stigma associated with his case caused him significant distress, further exacerbating the emotional trauma he endured. He mentioned an incident during his incarceration where he was attacked by another inmate. He asserted that this incident contributed to his overall suffering and argued that it should be taken into consideration when determining the compensation amount. By presenting these various factors, Sam aimed to substantiate his claim for the requested compensation, asserting that he suffered significant harm both physically and psychological. In response to this, the defense informed the court that Sam was seeking a higher amount of damages, but according to the established guidelines, the damages should be awarded at the lower end of the spectrum. As a compromise, the defense agreed to a daily compensation of $900 from the day Sam was detained. This calculation results in a total sum of $64,800. It was clear during the hearing that there was no agreement or settlement on this reduced amount, and both parties would wait to hear what the Supreme Court Judge John Dixon would summarize. After nearly two months from the date of the hearing, Judge John Dixon has now delivered his judgment on Monday the 31st of July 2023. Grid Sparta has obtained a copy of this 42-page judgment, which is attached in the description of this video. In this judgment, Justice John Dixon expressed his uncertainty regarding whether the additional time Sam spent in prison could be classified as false imprisonment, but he acknowledged its unjust nature. Sam was imprisoned for 72 days, spending 35 days in solitary confinement with deprivation of various privileges without justification. Judgment further states that the parole board members are not servants or agents of the Crown, for the purposes of establishing vicarious liability under the Crown Proceedings Act. The parole board was exercising an independent statutory role. The judgment rejected the claim that the imprisonment was unlawful, thus the damages for false imprisonment could not be awarded and were dismissed. 
His Honor further states that he had been required to assess plaintiff's damages claim, and would have assessed the plaintiff's general damages to lie in the range of $140,000 to $160,000, and special damages at around $33,000 for past and future medical expenses. So the total compensation comes out to be around $190,000 as compared to the $64,000 previously offered. The judge instructed that the reasons for his judgment should be sent to the Attorney General. Along with the stated suggestions, that the Attorney General should consider making an ex-gratia payment to Abdul Rahim. An ex-gratia payment is a payment made out of goodwill, without any legal obligation or liability. It is essential to understand that ex-gratia payments are made at the discretion of the paying party and are not legally binding. They are often viewed as acts of compassion, empathy, or social responsibility to help individuals or groups in challenging situations. Unlike a payment made as part of a legal obligation, such as a court-ordered settlement, an ex-gratia payment is discretionary and not enforceable by law.